Hello and welcome to Zanata Consulting's beginner series. This video is on Zoho projects. Um, in this video, we're going to walk through setting up task dependencies inside of a project template. Um, the dependencies are just a really powerful way to make sure that as things change, either moving up in schedule or back in schedule, that everything stays lined up how you how you'd like it to um, in terms of your project planning. Um, and so there's there's a couple different ways you can actually go about setting up dependencies. Um, so we're going to work off of this template that we have uh, that we actually built in our previous video. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to go ahead and take a look at how to actually set up one of these templates. Um, but we kind of have a set of different meetings here that we're going to schedule and then some actions that are going to happen for, uh, you know, kind of preparing some documents and doing a handoff. And so the first way that you could actually go ahead and set up dependencies is from this task list. So, you know, in this case, I know for a fact that we can't execute an initial scoping meeting until we've scheduled an initial scoping meeting. So we could say that this second task depends on completing the first task. And so if I open up the schedule initial scoping meeting task, down here at the bottom, there's gonna be a little tab for dependency. And here, what we can do, if I actually just go ahead and click on this task here, it'll give us the option to add either a predecessor or a successor. And so if I wanted to add the successor task, I would just go ahead and open this up. I could start to search here for execute initial scoping meeting, and I could put that as the successor task. And we'll see it starts to kind of build your Gantt chart here. Um, so this is kind of one way to do it. I personally don't prefer to do it this way. I, I kind of think it feels a little bit squeezed down here at the bottom. So what I'll oftentimes do to build out these dependencies is I'll go instead to the Gantt chart view here under Gantt and reports. And so what we can do under this view is actually just drag our dependencies. So here I have this schedule initial scoping meeting and I have execute initial scoping meeting. And I can actually just drag a line straight from one to the other to create that dependency. And so in this case, what we'll find is that this task, once we make it dependent, is gonna kind of scoot itself up to the day after this task is completed. Um, you can kind of choose if you wanna move it back in reality, what will happen is as this task is moved, if you didn't complete this for a couple of days, this is just going to stay true to be right after that task. Um, so in this use case, I actually think it's okay. Um, generally, we're going to want to schedule that scoping meeting within a day or two of, of getting it confirmed. Um, if you know that generally there's going to be a delay between certain things, then you would just move it out here on your task list. And so a couple of things that we can do, you know, we'll actually go ahead and set up our dependencies for each of these basically saying that each meeting that's going to be executed, of course, needs to be scheduled first. And I'll go ahead and move them out to kind of keep that linear flow here of one meeting after another. And one nice thing about the dependencies is they don't just have to be one to one. Um, so in this case, maybe we have to complete all of these meetings before we could prepare our handoff document. And so you're not just limited to making one thing a predecessor. I can actually go ahead and add multiple predecessors to this task to make sure that we've got everything done in time before we go ahead and prepare that document. I will notice that as I do this, it's always going to move this task to the latest completion task that is a predecessor. And so because this task is going to be completed on day six and it's a predecessor of the operations handoff document, it went ahead and moved itself there as I was creating these dependencies. And so again, in this case, we can just continue our flow here and create each of these dependencies as we need them um, and just move things right along. Now, a big advantage of why I recommend doing this with the Gantt chart is that it's much more responsive to changes in scheduling. Sometimes if you do this in the task view and you try to move something around, it's gonna throw an error. It'll look something like this. A successor task cannot be scheduled before a predecessor task, where it's basically telling me, hey, you just tried to move this too early in the process based on these preceding tasks. And if you do things in the Gantt chart, I think you'll find that things just move themselves around a little bit better and a little bit easier um, to make sure that you're not getting frustrated and getting that error thrown as you try to make small edits to the project timeline. 
So the last little thing just to be aware of as we look at these um, dependencies is some of the settings around them. So of course, we have our default set here as a finished start dependency, meaning that I need to finish all of the predecessor tasks before I can really start on the successor task. You don't have to do it that way. You could say that a task has to be started in order to start task two with a S to S or start to start methodology. You could say that a task has to be started for you to finish another dependency. And you could also say that a task has to be finished before you can finish another. So you're not stuck just with a linear like finish to start method. You can kind of tweak it based on your preferences. And then additionally, you can add a time delay. Like if you know that there's always gonna be a couple days after you finish a particular task before you can actually start that successor, you can add a lag of a couple days. You know, so maybe I wanna have a three day lag. Actually in this case, I'd set the lag here with the latest most task. And that'll kind of adjust your reporting automatically for you kind of planning out that things are gonna take time to get into that next step. And so once we actually have all of these dependencies set up, any time that you make a project from this template, it's gonna automatically start all of these start dates and due dates based on your start after and your duration. Um, it's also going to skip any weekends based on these start and due dates. And so no matter what, even though I've set a dependency that says, you know, this task is gonna be started a couple days after this one, if this start date would fall on one of your weekends, which we set up under our portal settings in a previous video, it will not have it start on a weekend. So once you have all these dependencies built out, it makes life a whole lot easier as you get into spinning up these projects. And so that will just about cover it here for our basic walkthrough of dependencies inside of Zoho projects. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, be sure to subscribe down below to stay in the loop as we um, publish more of these walkthroughs as well as product webinars and other tips and tricks on the channel. Thanks again for watching.